editorial daily wrap for E Times and EDN. So, Alan. Yes. How was your day, apart from extremely, extremely exhausting? Well, beyond exhausting, I found it very informative and educating. What was particularly informative and educating about today? I found out that they could jam about 10 press events in the span of eight hours, and I could attend nine of them. Well, I've got pedometer on me right now, so I have you beat in terms of... Um, Total steps? Yes. I'm currently on... I think it's 7,636, and I only switched this on an hour ago. <laughs> so. uh, that's quite impressive, uh -huh. actually. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Sylvie. But um, in all seriousness, today started off with press conferences from Huawei, which announced its new phone uh, with uh, the TI chip in it. That's right, the Ascend uh, P P1, sorry. Yep, and you're going to take it apart soon, aren't you? Oh, we're hoping to get it as soon as it comes out. We asked all the leading questions to figure out exactly when the uh, Ascend would be released in North America, but the president, Richard Yu, was uh, quite tight-lipped, uh, going with the generic mid-2012. So we've, we saw that, and then after that was the Intel event, and that was all about Ultrabooks right there. Right. They had Ultrabooks with NFC, they had Ultrabooks with Touch, they had Ultrabooks with Gesture Control, they had Ultrabooks with Voice Recognition. Pretty much an Ultrabook for whatever you can ever imagine doing. And, and the most important Ultrabook, in my opinion, was the Ultrabook that used the Intel 22 nanometer processor. Now, the Intel Ivy Bitch processor is uh, quite well known in the industry for being um, delayed. Yes. That's the nice way to put it. At least six months. At least six months. And it was quite amazing that Intel was actually able to show uh, a couple of laptops that were actually showcasing the 22 nanometer processor. And you know what? It looks like it's going to be worth the wait. It does. I mean, the graphics performance on that, they were showing DX11 running on that. And I was quite worried about it in the beginning because Intel hasn't had DX11 for a long time, much to everyone's consternation. And uh, Muli Eden stood up today and said, well, you know, we were just waiting until it went mainstream. Right. So <laughs> luckily, they've now deemed us mainstream enough to bring uh, superior graphics too. So there was there was that. I really liked, I don't know if you saw the Nikiski concept right. notebook. That was really cool with the, um, it had a panel on the front, which sort of had a smartphone-like functionality. So you could see your notifications on the front of your laptop and then you could choose whether it was important enough to open your laptop or just dismiss the notifications and move on with your day. And you know going with the theme of window tiles I think uh, we've seen about 15 products today that were showcasing the Windows uh, new operating system so the tiles are the big thing. And then, of course, NVIDIA's press conference was also, well, to be honest, they didn't show very much Windows 8. They showed it right at the end when they brought a Microsoft guy on to talk. Most of the conference was, uh, was Jensen sitting around playing with his Android tablet with the ice cream sandwich uh, build on the ASUS Transformer, which was, which was pretty nice. It's a nice tablet. So that was uh, an interesting one today. There was also new TVs from Sony, from uh, Panasonic, from LG, I think, was there a 55-inch or something massive today? And then Samsung showcased their, their newest 55-inch OLED uh, television, which looked amazing in the uh, dark-lit uh, press event. Um, you know, in terms of uh, clarity and uh, vibrancy, uh, nothing beats the Samsung 55 OLED TV, or their Super AM OLED technology just it looks amazing. You also got to see uh, Mr. Justin Timberlake himself, Mr. Social Network. Mr. Social Network. The irony is Mr. Social Network has become Mr. Social Network. Uh, Justin Timberlake had purchased MySpace and uh, used the Panasonic press event to showcase the new social interactivity that MySpace is going to uh, evolve into. So it'll be interesting to see how that relationship between Panasonic and MySpace works out. And of course, we can't finish off the day without talking about Nokia and without talking about Microsoft. Both of them had their keynotes today. We saw Borma twice on stage, once in the Nokia keynote and then once again in his own keynote, which was his last in CES. Uh, apparently, Microsoft is pulling out of CES forever, although we'll see if it's forever or ever, ever. And uh, there was uh, not too much news in the Microsoft one, but Nokia did uh, show off its uh, it's Lumia 900, which is coming to the AT&T network, AT&T's 4G network, actually. So uh, we'll be seeing that. That'll be Nokia's first attempt to crack the North American market. So it'll be interesting to see what that brings. And we're looking forward to you guys stripping that phone to pieces. Uh, we, we found a date of release. They, they told us it would be out in the uh, end of spring. Um, 
The Nokia 900 did disappoint a few people, though. I think a lot of people are expecting a dual-core processor and the use of Windows 8. That was the, uh, a lot of the scuttlebutt going into the to CES. Um, the, show, the phone they showcased today was a single-core processor still running Windows 7.5. So uh, it just looked like a modification on the Lumia 800. We'll see what uh, customers think, though. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I know it's a very late night. It's uh, currently quarter to 12, and we have to be at the Intel booth at what time tomorrow morning? We have to be there at 7 a.m. for you people. Yes, so enjoy watching us suffer. We'll get four hours sleep and get back to you. Thanks so much for watching.